The Russian occupation army will face a shortage of weapons and material resources for the war against Ukraine. This will deepen Russia's dependence on foreign partners in this matter. Russia is likely to face increasing challenges in producing and procuring the material needed for its operations in Ukraine, and the Kremlin is likely to become increasingly dependent on foreign partners to meet its material needs, analysts at the Institute for the Study of War predict. As experts explain, the invading army relies heavily on restocking Soviet-era weapons and equipment to support its offensives, especially armored vehicles. Russian authorities will likely need to further mobilize the Russian economy and defense industry and invest in capability development if the Russian military is to maintain the current tempo of operations in the medium to long term as Russia exhausts its limited Soviet stockpiles, but it is unclear whether the Russian defense industry will be able to produce enough to withstand the high level of equipment losses that Russian forces will suffer in Ukraine, even with further economic mobilization, the ISW said. Analysts have previously predicted that the aggressor's efforts to expand its military-industrial complex were unlikely to be sustainable in the medium and long term due to the expected labor shortage and the impact of Western sanctions. The main intelligence directorate of Ukraine called North Korea the most influential ally of the Kremlin since the supply of ammunition from the North Korea to Russia has a direct and rapid impact on the dynamics of the war. In particular, the armed forces of Ukraine feel the increase in the tempo of Russian operations just a few days after the arrival of the next shipments of shells. As of June 2024, North Korea has supplied Russia with 4.8 million artillery shells. North Korea's support has previously allowed Russia to maintain a significant artillery advantage over Ukraine, and Russia has used these advantages to support successive offensives aimed at denying Ukrainian forces the opportunity to seize the initiative. The analysts explain, recently the Russian authorities have stepped up their cooperation with the North Korea. In June, Putin visited Pyongyang and signed an agreement with Kim Jong-un on a comprehensive strategic partnership and on September the 13th, Russian Security Council Chairman Sergei Shoigu visited North Korea. Russia's deepening military partnership with the North Korea is symbolic of the relations the aggressor wants to build with Iran, China and other desired partners. Russia will likely face a reduction in its stockpiles of weapons and equipment and will try to compensate for this deficit unless it can circumvent Western sanctions on a large scale and significantly expand its interactions with foreign partners to obtain sufficient quantities of military equipment, components and dual-use goods, the analysts concluded. During the massive attacks on Ukraine, the Russian Federation is particularly brutally striking settlements that have large Jewish communities. The internet suspects that this may not be just a coincidence. The cities of Uman, Nipa, Odessa and others, which have close ties with Jews, appear almost daily in military reports due to Russian strikes. The Russian Federation bombs these peaceful settlements with particular cruelty, which may not be a coincidence. This fact is actively discussed by supporters of the Iranian IRGC on the internet. According to Dialogua media outlet, Iranians are especially happy about the flights to Uman, a holy place for Jews. On its territory is the grave of the founder of Hasidism, Rabbi Nachman of Bratslav, which is visited annually by thousands of pilgrims. In public groups dedicated to the IRGC, they very actively talk about the fact that Moscow pays for missiles and kamikaze drones not only with its own resources, but also with strikes on Jewish places in Ukraine. Recall that recently information appeared about the arrival of a batch of short-range ballistic missiles from Iran to the Russian Federation. It is expected that the Russian armed forces will begin using them for strikes on Ukraine in the coming weeks. Today, Jews play a major role in repelling Russian aggression in Ukraine. A huge number of ethnic Jews are fighting in the Ukrainian defense forces, sacrificing their health and lives. Let us recall that yesterday, September the 12th, the funeral of the fallen defender of Ukraine, Matityahu Anton Samborsky, the son of the country's chief rabbi, Mosh Azman, took place. The inconsolable father made a statement in which he noted that the current war is a struggle between good and evil. Evil is limited. Its essence is to kill, destroy, annihilate. And good is infinite. It means to love, build, grow, help. I am sure that together we will dispel this evil and it will disappear, the rabbi declared. Israeli military journalist Sergei Ozlender also spoke out on Telegram. He emphasized 
the insignificance of Russian accusations against Ukraine. The son of the chief rabbi of Ukraine, Mosh Azman, Anton, who served in the armed forces of Ukraine, died in the war that Russia started to denazify Ukraine. As it was said in the famous quote attributed to Churchill, the fascists of the future will call themselves anti-fascists. So, just to understand, Ukrainian Jews are dying fighting against Russian fascists who came to liberate them from the Nazism that they themselves invented. The journalist wrote, Indicative in this situation is the position of the Israeli authorities who, fearing to spoil relations with the Kremlin, ignore the threatening strengthening of cooperation between the Russian Federation and Iran, the growth of anti-Semitism in Russia and attacks on Jews in Ukraine.